Paul. Paul, are you a professional dancer? No. Who taught you to move and dance? The death of Paul Williams of The Temptations was something that took us all by surprise. They said he took his own life by shooting himself. To end the misery, to end the pain that had come from the frustrations and difficulties of life. Not everyone believed that Paul Williams' death story. Unexplained circumstances surrounding his death caused his family to suspect some kind of foul play. How could he have shot himself on the left side of his head, but his gun was found in his right hand? In order to have shot himself, Williams would have had to angle his gun in an impractical manner. Second, a bottle found by his left had shattered, as if he had dropped it. Third, the gun had been fired twice, but only one bullet was lodged inside Williams. Those three points did raise a lot of questions. Furthermore, why would a man get into his car half-dressed, drive a few blocks, and then take his own life? Before we dive deep into this, let's have a quick background check on the events that led to all this. Born July 2, 1939 in the Ensley neighborhood of Birmingham, Alabama, Paul Williams sang baritone and was the original lead singer of the Motown group The Temptations. He was the son of Sophia and Rufus Williams, a gospel singer in a gospel music vocal group called the Ensley Jubilee Singers. This Christian foundation really shaped his life growing up. He enjoyed being the lead singer till 1965 when his world started to crumble. To begin with, he was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia. Second, he paved way for the lead role after the introduction of David Ruffin into the group who was assisted with Eddie Kendricks. Third, despite him being married, he got involved in an extramarital affair with Florence Ballard's relative and the then hair stylist of the Supremes, Winnie Brown. Fourth, the introduction of Charlie Atkins to the group as a choreographer, another role he played in the group further made his importance obsolete. With him now being in the shadows in the group after being the main spotlight, the sickness that forced him to be carrying oxygen cylinders backstage during tours and the guilt that came with cheating on his wife, he felt overwhelmed. And this drove him to depression. The depression drove him to drinking, something he had never tried his whole life. He would drink two to three-fifths of Corvacier a day. In 1969, Williams and Winnie Brown opened the Celebrity House West, a celebrity fashion boutique, in downtown Detroit. The business was not as successful as planned, and Williams soon found himself owing more than $80,000 in taxes. Things got worse, his voice became so ravaged due to his respiratory illness and alcoholism, prompting the group to replace him with Richard Street the then lead singer of fellow Motown act The Monitors. In April 1971, Williams was finally persuaded to go see a doctor. The doctor found a spot on William's liver and advised him to retire from the group altogether. Despite him trying to revive his career by going solo, the damage was beyond repair. On August 17, 1973, at the age of 34, Williams was found dead inside a car parked in an alley having just left the new house of his then-girlfriend after an argument. The story of his death had many holes, with some rumors claiming that Paul Williams was caught with his pants down in his girlfriend's apartment by her partner, who proceeded to gun him down. But again, that cannot be substantiated, so the official story remains official, albeit with questions unanswered. We do appreciate his input in the soul music industry. Do subscribe to ensure you don't miss content like this whenever we upload.